Hello Loving Health community, my name is Kate. I'm the founder of Loving Health, which provides you with evidence-based information for health and wellness. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be discussing another topic from our email newsletters. And if you would like these emails sent straight to you, send me an email at lovinghealthforme at outlook.com and I will get you subscribed. So today's topic is called less calcium, more greens and beans. What amount of calcium is optimal for the body to function and thrive long term? Our bodies need this mineral not just to fulfill a quota set by the USDA, but to perform vital functions such as providing materials for bone remodeling, balancing blood pH, and assisting muscle contractions, just to name a few. Calcium has been popularized as the widely touted key nutrient to keeping bones strong throughout old age, but do we need as much of it as we've been told? While calcium levels do play a part in the process of breaking down and building back bone, looking at the reduction of bone fractures as an endpoint in research is more meaningful than looking at markers of bone remodeling. That is why we want to build strong bones, right? So they don't break. The amount one can stimulate bone growth is meaningless if they are just as likely to suffer from low impact broken bones as they age. So what intake level of calcium is best for preventing fractures? Research has shown that there is a sweet spot for the amount of dietary calcium one needs and it's not as much as supplement companies or government dietary recommendations have led the public to believe. A 22-year study of over 54,000 men and women in China eating mainly plant-based diets found that fracture risk was lowest in men that consumed around 400 milligrams per day of calcium on average. The participants in this study were all over 50 and eating long-term low-calcium diets compared to Western recommendations. The USDA currently recommends 1,000 milligrams of calcium per day for adults and 1,200 milligrams per day for those age 70 to build strong bones, among other functions. That's double to triple the calcium amount of the group that showed the lowest risk of fractures. So that's way more calcium than the group that did the best in terms of fracture risk. Due to these reduced fracture rates from low calcium plant-based diets, the researchers recommended lowering the minimum safe value for daily calcium intake to 250 milligrams per day for Chinese women. And remember, these were all women that were about to go through menopause or that were in the transition of menopause. That's a stark difference from the 1200 milligrams per day recommendation in the US. Are there any detrimental effects to consuming too much calcium or intakes beyond the body's functional benefit? The researchers of this study stated that intakes beyond the low risk ranges of 275 to 780 milligrams per day for men and 250 to 650 milligrams per day for women most likely had no benefit for preventing fractures. They also found that the group with intake levels comparable to US recommendations had a higher fracture risk than the lower intake group. This study demonstrated that too little or too much calcium comes with a higher rate of fractures. What about looking at a secondary endpoint, bone density? A review of clinical, longitudinal, retrospective, and cross-sectional studies showed no benefit in bone density from calcium intakes over 400 to 500 milligrams. These results included calcium sourced from dairy. Contrary to this, isolated supplements and processed foods fortified with calcium are still marketed as easier ways to meet intake requirements to prevent osteoporosis. Unfortunately, preventing a chronic disease isn't as convenient as popping a pill or buying a fortified cereal. These messages are not evidence-based and they're mere marketing tactics to make foods appear healthier or to expand the target market population for supplement companies to increase their sales. Asians who traditionally consume a lower calcium diet have lower overall fracture rates compared to Europeans and Americans where calcium intake is plentiful. One could presume that genetics or lactose intolerance plays a role in this correlation. However, the Swedish mammography cohort study, which followed over 61,000 women for 19 years, also showed that higher calcium intakes increased the risk of hip fractures. So why consume excess calcium for no benefit and possible harm in return? 
Calcium is essential for human health. In fact, it is the most abundant mineral in the body with 99% of it stored in our bones. That's where it should be, but unfortunately, excess calcium in the form of isolated supplements has shown to increase the risk of kidney stones, bloating, constipation, coronary artery calcification, or CAC, where the lining of the arteries can become hardened with calcium. The use of calcium supplements has also been associated with higher rates of hip fractures in cohort studies and randomized controlled trials. Higher than necessary calcium intake can impair bone remodeling by slowing bone turnover. Our bodies are constantly remodeling our bones as we age and they break down old bone to rebuild it. Despite good intentions to slow the breakdown of bone, supplementing with calcium could instead intervene with necessary bone turnover. The body is also very resourceful and regulates calcium with three different systems to keep it in balance, the gastrointestinal tract, the bones, and the kidneys. If one were to overconsume their body's requirement of calcium, the intestinal cells would block its absorption and work synergistically with the kidneys to excrete the excess calcium in the bloodstream. Ingesting more calcium than necessary forces the body to perform extra work just to eliminate it and maintain homeostasis. Calcium intake and absorption has an inverse relationship. When intake is low, absorption increases, and as intake increases, absorption decreases. The same amount of calcium is also not required each and every day. Needs fluctuate depending on the ever-changing demands of our bodies to keep us alive and well. Calcium absorption and utilization depends on the balance of other nutrients available to the body. Micromanaging every single nutrient consumed is not only extremely tedious and time consuming, but is also irrelevant because the body is selective with how much calcium it absorbs. The human body is very smart. It takes what it needs and lets the rest pass through. Supplements with concentrated amounts of isolated nutrients are marketed as convenient ways to meet the body's needs without putting in the effort to eat optimally or to fill in the gaps, so to speak. But what's the point of taking a supplement every day if the only thing that it's doing is changing your blood markers? In other words, if getting your nutrients from a supplement is not actually reducing your disease risk or improving long-term outcomes, what is the point of taking them? There are unique scenarios where taking isolated supplements can be useful, such as cases of severe symptomatic deficiency. However, correcting extreme deficiencies does not equate to preventing chronic diseases. The purpose for aiming for a necessary amount of vitamins and minerals, not too little and not too much, is to prevent disease and live a long, healthy life. The key to this is eating an optimal diet and letting the body take what it needs while absorbing and utilizing nutrients in balance with one another. So if you liked learning about this topic and you found this information useful, please like and share the video. And I'll be back with you next time with more evidence-based general health information. Bye guys, have a great day.